Matthew, you ready? <laughs> let me let me say hello. Good morning, everyone. We still have a few people in uh, Sunday School Bible Study, but they will be here very soon. It's good to see everyone. We have a few of our families traveling on vacation. Uh, I'm going on vacation soon. Anyone still going on vacation? All right, good, good. good. All right, I'm going to officially start our service. Uh, Matthew's going to come up and open us up on prayer. Uh, hopefully everyone, if you're back there in the foyer, it's time to start. Let's get ready to go and let's pray together. Hey everyone, uh, please stand for the opening prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the blessings that you have given us. May your Holy Spirit be felt among each one of us. Bless the message, bless all of our activities and may your name be glorified. We give you our utmost praise and worship. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's give him all our praise this morning because he deserves it and he is worthy of it all. Amen. Let's praise him together. <laughs>
to worship once again, I, I invite you in his holy presence and just allow the Holy Spirit to take over. Amen. Father God, we open our hearts to you. We open our minds. You are worthy, Lord God, and there is no one above you, Lord God. We praise you for who you are. We thank you, Lord God, that you love us for who we are, right where we are, standing here before you, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God, of all things that is not of you. Just remove it, Lord, so we can truly worship you in this place, in spirit and in truth, Lord God. We praise you in this place. We love you so much, Lord.
praise of God, because of from our hearts will ever be on our lips. We serve and worship a great and powerful and loving God. Amen. Be in a position biblically to respond. We invite Pastor Roy to come and pray. Whether if you feel the need to come to the altar, to remain standing, sit to kneel. Let us come before the Lord in prayer together. Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Tim. Good morning, church. God is good. And all the time. Yes. The last song that we just sang. Your praise will be on my lips all the time. And it's, I've been reminded the lesson that we just had in the Sunday school. Yes, our words through the leadership of Koyaromi. I was so blessed and happy to be with you, brethren, worshiping our God, praising our God. In the last months, I was so blessed. And hopefully, if we will be back on the Philippines, God willing, we will be partnering with you in spreading the good news of God in our uh, district in the Philippines. And I was so blessed, really, to see all of you maturing in, in serving the God, our, our Lord Jesus Christ. And while I'm watching and listening, in sharing time during the Sunday school, and not only that, during our worship time. Thank you, praise and worship. May God bless you all and continue to serve our God in, in all aspects that we can do. Let's pray. Oh, most gracious, loving God, we are so thankful, Lord. Yes, Lord, it's our prayer that you will use us in every ministry that we can do to proclaim your goodness to all of us. 2,000 years ago, Lord, you came to this earth to save us, to pay the price so we can be rightful in your sight. Thank you, Lord, for the unfailing love. Thank you, Lord, for the saving grace that Jesus Christ did. He died on the cross just to pay our death of sin. What a joy, oh Lord. May it be, Lord, that each one of us will look back of what our Lord Jesus Christ did at the cross. His blood shed on the cross. Meaning to see Lord, He paid the price of the sins. And gave us, oh Lord, the opportunity to be with a holy family of yours to our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we could feel and we could see the outcome of our faith. In this church, Lord, we grown up spiritually. We grown up and become mature in serving you. Lord, bless our leaders, church leaders, Pastor Tim and his family. Not only Pastor Tim and his family, but all our church elders, leaders in this church. May it be, Lord, that we will continue to serve you, to honor you, to worship you. The lessons that we just learned, Lord, may it be, remind us in every day of our life 
that its words that come out from our mouth will give you praises, Lord. Lord, use us as your channel of blessings. We do remember also our brethren who are sick right now. They have feeling, Lord, that they could join us to worship you, but they cannot do it because of their illness. Lord, please, Lord, extend your mighty hands and touch their healing bodies, Lord. In due time, in your time, Lord, we know and we believe that we, they will join us to give you honor and glory. Not only in this place, but wherever we are, Lord, may your name be glorified. We do pray for our soldiers also, outside the country and inside our country, Lord, making peace. Lord, be with them and grant your blessings so they could perform their job in your name. Bless our country, Lord. Bless our president, President Biden, and all his cabinet, senators, congressmen, mayors, governors. Lord, bless our leaders in the government. Not only them, Lord, but bless our leaders also inside our church. Lord, guide them and protect them. Even us, Lord, from the youngest to the oldest in this group, in this congregation, may it be, Lord, we feel the power of the Holy Spirit leading us. Thank you, O Lord, for the past BBS. Thank you, Lord, for using all our teachers. Lord, imparting the gospel, the love of Jesus Christ, our children. Bless them, Lord, as they grow. It's one of us, Lord. Use us in accordance to your will. We do pray for our services, our ministry in this church. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. That is us all. Right after church, uh, on request of our Men's President Romy back notes, and we are going to have a quick uh, congregational uh, meeting uh, just to discuss the uh, the barbecue fundraiser. Uh, can you imagine? Years ago, there was a meeting right after church to discuss to build the future of that basketball court. Right? I saw some old pictures uh, of the of the the parking lot where it was all dirt. But because of the church, the church met years ago, and that basketball court was, is such a ministry tool to reach people in our community. Amen? Amen. And so we have another meeting right after church. If you can stick around, uh, Romy's going to uh, talk to us a little bit about details for our barbecue fundraiser. And then the, all the funds for the fundraiser will go towards continually loving people within our community. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, there's a charity walk. I didn't uh, talk to Tala. Tala is back there. Or Miriam. Is Miriam here? Uh, Miriam. I didn't prep Mary or anything. There is a, uh, a, a, a ministry charity walk next month. Is that correct? I just kind of remembered it right now. Yeah, Relay for Life. Relay for Real Life. Okay. Uh, you're going to be hearing a lot more in the following Sundays on how to get involved. Because of COVID in the past uh, couple of years, uh, we were not able to be involved. But the Relay of, of Life, want to just put that in your head and your hearts and your calendars for next month uh, in terms of another opportunity to be a blessing relay for life uh starting this thursday our family and i we're going to be headed out for a quick vacation we're going to be river rafting in idaho uh, joining uh, sky's family is going to be like almost 30 of us uh, meeting uh, all of our family from maui we're going to be river rafting in idaho pastor scott nally the lead pastor for from bridgeway church just down the road he will be speaking next sunday and so we are excited to have pastor scott bring the word uh, so we're still going to have a powerful service and we encourage all of you to continue to be here amen Good. i'm forgetting Good. something what we're going to show you after uh, uh during the offering we are going to show you a video of what took place 
this week. And but I want to invite Donna to come up to the stage. Uh, Donna has just been obviously a blessing. Uh, she does many things in terms of the media and the worship, but uh, she was the the heart mastermind behind. Uh, our mega sports camp. You know, a lot of us leaders uh, didn't realize uh, good vibes. Vibes was an acronym until my last day. But vibes, V I B E S. Uh, kids, help me out. B stands for I am what? All right. And the I stands for influential. Being an influential. What, what's the next one? B is I am. I am brave, just like Jesus is brave. And E is what? And encouraging, right? To be an encourager just like Jesus. And S stands for? Selfless. selfless, right? Being selfless like Jesus. And good vibes only. We were uh, taught those precious, precious uh, uh, statements in terms of what it means to truly be like Jesus. And it couldn't have happened without uh, Donna. And you know what? The altar... Friday, uh, when we went and gave, gave the altar call, all the kids looked up and, and gave their lives to Jesus. And so that wouldn't have happened uh, without all of you that helped out, cooked, participated, led games, all of it. But um, Donna, just a special thank you from our church. Oh, um, we you. <laughs> so at this time, we're going to continue our worship. I'm going to invite Butch to come and pray for the offering. And right after he prays, Thank you, ushers. Uh, if you can be ready, we're going to see the VBS video. So it's a quick three, three-minute video of what took place. In every image that you see, let's just praise God for what took place. Amen? Amen. All right, what you uh, prepare us for the offering. Uh, at VBS, really thank you for all the, yeah. the one who helped, the mom, the big sister, the big kuya who was there too. Honestly, I was just sitting down and observing. I said, what can I do? <laughs> because all of these volunteers, as young as 13 years old, helping out, big sisters, big brothers. Okay, let's bow our head. Yeah. Heavenly Father, thank you for this abundant gift that you have, especially the eternal life. Lord, all this gift that you have given us, we will give back some of it lord yes. so may this gift be, be acceptable in your sight and be used to your ministry as we give in our life to you lord because you have given your life to us first oh lord lord uh i i pray for all who are not feeling you yet lord uh may this uh gift that we give you remind them that every one of us here have received a special gift and it's up to them to look inside your heart and see what are those gifts, O oh Lord? This monetary that we're going to give you, Lord, is just a portion of your blessing. And we know you have given us more than we didn't even think about it, O oh Lord. Lord, I pray for our church that this offering will be used to increase and expand your ministry, O oh Lord. All this I pray in your mighty name, our Lord and Savior, Jesus. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Amen.
thank you for all of you who uh, volunteered. Lots of hard work. By Wednesday, I was already ready to quit because it was just so hot and uh, just a lot of energy involved. But again, just to see the life and the joy and the energy from our kids, what a blessing. And ultimately, to instill the seed of Jesus. That's why we do it. Amen. Amen. To uh, allow them to hear the good news that they are loved. The Word of God says this on the screen. We are in 2 Peter. 2 Peter. Well, first of all, I forgot to announce our Labor Day uh, weekend. Again, we are having our Labor Day family camp. We are going to finalize with our board meeting this Tuesday of all the details. And then after our meeting, we will present it to all you guys or where we're going. Uh, and so, we, uh, again, mark it on your calendar. We are having family camp. Amen? Yes. All right. Let's do this. God's Word says this. Yeah, kids, if you guys are headed out, the, the young ones, they're going to head out to their uh, Bible time. We'll give them a, a chance to uh, head out. The rest of you are mine. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Word of God says this, His divine power, and we'll say power, power, has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. The word of the Lord. Amen? Amen. A lot of you know about the Bataan March, the Death March in the Philippines, World War II, Japan has invaded my father tells me stories of my grandfather, his father, Colonel Lito Cruz in the Filipino army. As you guys know, the, tra the tragedies and all the deaths that uh, fellow Filipinos were having to march from one end to the other. My dad tells a story in terms of uh, Colonel, my Lolo, uh, him and a few of the other soldiers were able to escape and run away and uh, remove themselves from that tragic event. And uh, when he was alive, he told me stories, horrific stories, how so many of his uh, brothers uh, did not make it in terms of surviving that march. But he also tells me that how lucky he was. And sometimes he feels guilt that he was able to escape along with some of the other soldiers. But reading this, right, it reminds me of just that story, that true story of escaping, because it says there, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. That my grandfather was able to escape this evil tragedy. Here, the gospel, part of the gospel message is that we are part of an escape Plan. Amen? Amen? Because of his divine nature, that we are able to escape the world and the horrors of the world. Now, don't get me wrong, I agree with Louis Armstrong, that beautiful song, What a Wonderful What? World. world. So, I'm not saying everything about the, the world is evil. There's so many beautiful things, and hiking, and waterfalls, and there's just, you know, love and love from people. There's so many beautiful things, but what we're talking about is the worldly system, the sinful nature, that, that, that sinful lifestyle that leads ultimately to death. And God is saying, because of his divine nature, because of the Savior, we are able to escape. Because there's so much more that God has for you and I. Amen? Okay. Having escaped the corruption of the world. So let's break it up one more time. Hit it one more time for me. His divine power has given us everything that we need. His divine power has given us everything that we need. And so I'm going to point out here the three G's. You guys see that? He's given us divine power for a godly life. Amen? Number one. He's given us his divine power. Why? Also, number two, for his glory. Right? Because he deserves it. He is God Almighty. And he's also given us his divine power. Because he's simply a good God. 
Amen? Amen. He could have been any type of God, but we're reminded in Scripture, He's almighty, yes, but He's also a good God. So He's given us His divine power so we can live a godly life for His own glory, but because He's just simply just amazing. He's a good God. Amen. Now, how does it feel when you have everything that you need? We're going to go river rafting this Thursday. And I'm scrambling to make sure that I have everything that we need. I hope when we arrive at the middle of the Fork Salmon River in Idaho, that when I unpack, that I have everything that we need. Right, Cameron? Right? Headlamps, whatever, you know, clothes, everything that we need. It feels so good when we have everything that we need. When we cook, right? When you're about to cook your masterpiece dish, when you go to the cupboard, it feels good that you have everything all the ingredients that we need because if when we're, we're about to read a list very soon he gives a godly list and i love it that he says before he gives the list he by the way he's saying look i'm going to give you this list very soon and he says by the way i'm going to give you everything that you need to live this godly list out yes i'm going to give you the power and i'm about to present to you this list on what it means to live like Jesus. I want to show you this quote real quick. One more time. You know, some of you might be here this morning saying, oh, you know, all this power, godly life. Some of you are in such a rut, maybe. Some of you are just weighed down. And I uh, remember this quote also from World War II, right? Corey Ten Boom. Nazi occupied, being occupied, uh, concentration camps. And what does she say? I and mean, sometimes I get depressed just at life at times and I get sad and you know, my life is compared to what she had to go through, right? And what does she say? What does she say? She wrote, she wrote so many things, but one of the things she said is, you know what, there's no pit so deep where God is not deeper still. Amen? Amen. So no matter how far you are, you're hearing all this language about power and godly living and all that. I want to remind you that there is a God that knows what you're going through. He is Lord. He is on it. There is a plan. And we need to continue to trust in Him. Amen? Amen. So now let's talk about power. Amen? Next, next verse. Be who you were created to be. Be who you were created to be. I remember when the divine nature started to happen in my life. My senior year of high school. It wasn't like this supernatural change in my life. But I remember I gave my life to Jesus. My senior year of high school. One of the great things that I love, most people love in high school, is when a fist fight breaks out. You guys remember fist fights, right? Uh, in high school especially. And I remember fist fights would break out and I would start running. I would always be the first one there. Fight! Yes, I want to see a good fist fight. And I remember I just gave my life to the Lord just recently. And I love to see a good fight. And now I remember when I got there, when I just gave my life to the Lord, and being there, they were, they were, they were, they were fighting in you know, the blood and all that bruises. And, but there was, there was just a new thing happening in my heart. As I was watching that fight, I'm, I, there was something in me that says, man, this is just weird. And I was thinking to myself, this should not be. This is just, this is awful. This is bad. I've never felt that before. And I blame God, right? I thank God, right? Because I was just realizing this, this was the first inklings that I was becoming a changed man. Amen? Yeah. I'm not talking about fighting, boxing for, you know, you know that's, that's fine. I'm not talking about real people fighting to kill themselves, right? To kill each other. Yes? Okay. And when I saw that, that they, got, they were, be, I, I went in there. I became known as the guy that would get in the fights and break it up, right? Break it up. Because the divine nature was creeping into my life. Praise the Lord, right? And so we were reminded first and foremost that he's given us everything that we need for godly living. And here's the list, right? These are seven qualities to add to our faith. If you are here and you claim to have a faith, 
This is an example of what it means for godly living. Let's read it. For this re very reason, right? Make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, or could also be translated as brotherly love, the love for each other as the church, and uh, to mutual affection, love. That agape love, that self-sacrifice type of love, that I will go the extra mile for you type of love, that I will lay down my life for you type of love. And so here's this list. He says, look, I've given you everything that you need, and here is this list in terms of what it means for godly living. Because we are not of this world anymore. What does the verse say? One more time. One more time, you can hit it for me, Joshua. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Yes. And we belong to the heavenly kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. Right? Remember, he's, he's about to, you know, get arrested. And, 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 and he's saying, look. And remember when he was... Uh, when he was about to get arrested, and uh, Peter, remember? Right? Peter grabs the sword of the centurion. What does he do? He, the Bible stuff is so graphic, right? Chops his ear off. And then what does God, Jesus, do? He picks it up. Puts it back. Does his healing thing. Right? And they're like, wow. And then, out of his mouth, he starts to flex a little bit. Out of his mouth, he says, Oh, you know what? Stop this. At any moment, don't you realize that I can send the angelic army and the, the angelic heavenly forces to come down and wipe them all out? That's my own translation. And he flexes a little bit. By the way, don't you know this could happen? And he's saying this also. Look. There's no physical rebellion right now. This is reminding them, my kingdom is not of this world. It's a kingdom of peace. It's a kingdom of love. It's a kingdom of saying, look, I'm going to love those who hurt me. Remember the movie, uh, Keanu Reeves movie, The Matrix? Right? Red pill, blue pill. And Morpheus is coming to the character, Neo, right? If you remember the movie. So look, if you take this pill, I forgot what color it was, I'll just say the red pill. If you take this red pill, you, your life's gonna go on, you're still in Wonderland. But if you take the blue pill, I'm gonna really show you what's really happening. Your eyes are gonna be lifted. And you're really gonna see what is happening. And Jesus has come for all of us Yes, we can enjoy life and enjoy the world and go on vacation, yes. But Jesus has come to show us that there's so much more to life than this earthly life. Amen? That's why we do VBS. We make it fun. Yes, we're, we're fun people, but we want to tell the kids, look, to plant that seed now, that there's more to life than what we, our five senses, experience that there's a whole nother world. That when we die, we go on. That there's eternity in heaven. And there's also eternity in that other place. Yes? And so he's saying, my kingdom is not of this world. So again, goodness, what does that mean? Moral ex excellence, uprighteousness, right? Righteousness, knowledge, uh, to, to truly know the right thinking, the gospel, the good message, the truth of Jesus, self-control, right? To master restraint, perseverance, to endure hardships, to hang on for your dear life onto Jesus when things are just crazy all around you. Again, godliness, which means devotion to godly living, mutual uh, affection, you know, brotherly kindness, the love that we have for the church, brothers and sisters, and then obviously agape love. God saying, here's the list, and by the way, I'm going to give you everything you need, not in your own strength, 
but you're going to have everything you need to live that list out. Amen? I've said this analogy before. It's ima imagine you are you have a gym membership. Who's been to a gym membership before? A anyone has a gym? Yeah. So you know what it's like. Uh, some of you, you know, you go in there and you pay for your membership and you go into the gym and you have everything that you need to be healthy and to get in the shape. You, have, you walk in there, there's the treadmill, there's the weights, there's, you know, some of them have basketball courts, there's some of, some of them have swimming pools, you have everything you need to get healthy. And God is saying, look, I've given you everything that you need to be spiritually healthy. Bible studies, one-on-one -on -one with Jesus, worship time, when we serve the poor, fasting, prayer. God has given us each other also, right? The accountability. God has given us everything that we need to live godly lives, to live out that list. Amen? Amen. When you fail, hear me out. When you fail that list, everyone say Jesus. Thank God that we have a forgiving God. Amen? That allows us to get back on that saddle again and to pursue the godly lifestyle. Last point. Next, next slide. And one more time. May we never forget Right? Look at this. For if you possess these qualities, that list, right? If you possess, you have, right? If you possess these qualities in increasing measure and as you grow in these qualities, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted, nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. So he's saying here, if you possess them, productivity, fruitfulness, right? Growth. But if you do not live them out, he's saying here, it's like forgetting. Forgetting about what he did for you and I. Have you ever been to a memorial before? Yes? Visiting a loved one at the gravesite. And I put that, you know, Pearl Harbor picture up there. What do we do at memorials? We remember. We give thanks. Yes? We memorialize. We strive to never forget what that person did. And there's some times where I've led many funerals where, you know what, it was hard to give the eulogy because... You know, maybe they didn't live the lifestyle of Christ. But there are some beautiful funerals where I love to give the eulogy. Right? Where you know we get up there and we know and we could talk about that person and say, Man, that person wasn't perfect, but man, he strived to live like Jesus. And so at times when we come together and read God's word and come together as the body and have service, it's kind of like a, a funeral. We come together and we worship, but we remember and we never forget what he did for us. We eulogize Jesus. Amen? Amen. We never forget. And God's word is saying specifically, if we veer off from that list, he's saying it's like forgetting. It's like forgetting what God has done for us. And there's so much warning in the Bible. Because God knows... And here, Peter knows, and the recipients of this church, that they know that people will go astray. People that I was, uh, I call it my, my saving class. When I uh, gave my life to Jesus, February 2nd, 1992, at Alpine Conference Center in Lake Arrowhead, California, there was a bunch of us that came to that camp, winter camp, and we gave our lives to Jesus. But throughout the years, there's a handful of them that just have left the faith. I know God's not done with them yet. 
But there's so much warning in the Bible as to, to remind us, you know what, do not veer off. Continue to be productive and effective and to not be lazy in the faith. Amen? Amen. Oh, by the way, when you are lazy, he loves you. Yes. Amen? Yes. He loves you. Oh, how we love you. And that thought, that gospel thought, should just spur us on and say, God, man, you love me no matter what. May I get going. Because a lot of times we as Christians, we're known for, well, those are the people that don't, that, that don't do anything. They don't do this. They don't do that. They don't do this. But we're reminded in the Word of God that we are people that get going. That we're part of a movement of being productive, of being effective, to strive to live that list. Um, can you back it up one more time? Back it up to that list, Josh. Because a lot of times when we read God's Word and there's given a list, listen to this. A lot of times when we read a list, uh, not always, but we read it like this. We we. We, we add things. Oh, you know what? We need to uh, have goodness, and we add goodness. And then knowledge, and then self-control, and personal, and you keep adding things. Oh, man, I'm so busy, God. Well, all these things I have to do, right? But in light of Jesus, when we read that list, what, it, what should be happening is, man, make every effort to add goodness, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness. It should free us up. To be the people God has called us to be. Amen. Amen? That that list means freedom. Amen? Yes. Not being bogged down of all these things I have to do. Add, add, add. Ah. It should be freedom. This is what we're going to do. I want to remind you, you know, Joyce is going to close us, officially close us in prayer in a second, but I want you to just study that list. Go ahead, look at, look at that list. I want you to think about where is the area on that list that I need to work on. Some of you might be strong in some areas, but some of you, may, man, there, there, I, need, I, there's, I need some self-control in this area of my life. Or whether, whether it's the second or the last one, you know, I'm having trouble loving another brother and sister in Christ. Or maybe it's like, again, when I say this, I'm not saying you're lazy, but maybe you have been lazy in terms of studying the Word of God. <clears throat> or maybe you haven't been good at all this week. Whatever it is, remember that there's grace and love. But where are the, what are the areas in this list where God is calling you right now? And I need to not be lazy and move on this. And number two, how? How are you going to accomplish this? Remember, he's given us the, his divine nature. That he's given us everything that we need to live it out. Right? I don't want us just to walk out of here and say, okay, I need to do this. But what is the plan? What is the Holy Spirit action plan? If, I, if you're saying to yourself, man, I'm just not studying the word personally. I'm not really investing in my personal relationship with Jesus. Maybe it's to come to me and say, hey, pastor, what should I read in the Bible? Do you have a devotional book? Or whether if it's self-control, maybe you, you, you approach another person in this church and say, look, I'm having trouble with this area of my life. I need you to hold me accountable. I had, a, I had a friend when I was in college that, you know, he has this newfound freedom as a college student away from his Christian family, and he got hooked on to gambling. He would get in his car, and I don't know where he would get the money, first of all, he's a college student, but he would go and gamble, but for, all of a sudden he just said, you know what, I, I'm struggling with this, this is my struggle, I need you to hold me accountable, and whatever the struggle is. So right now between you and God, God, show me. A lot of you already know. I already know, Pastor. But show me the areas that I can continue to be, to live a godly life for you. Amen. Amen. And lastly, I want you to hear these words are from God. God knows it and sees it when you are being good. 
God sees you when you are studying the word. God is so pleased by you when you choose self-control. The love of God is right there rooting you on when you are striving to persevere. When you're striving to live a godly life. Cameron knows when we when I drive, what did I say the other day, Cameron? When I'm driving, I just said to her, I was so mad that this person did this wrong thing, and I was and I told Cameron, man, Cameron, I'm just, I would be crazy if I didn't have Jesus. <laughs> right? Remember I said that? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thanks. Well, thanks for it. <laughs> but I would be crazy because self-control and godliness, even when I have to, when I'm just simply driving, I get so angry, right? That I need the divine power. And every time I say something, Carrie hears me all the time. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I just start saying, thank you, Jesus. Because I need his divine power. Not only to be an example to my daughter and my family, but just because he deserves it. Amen. 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 God sees it when you are choosing love and peace towards each other with mutual affection. And God sees you when you sacrifice that type of agape love for each other and for a lost and broken world. God sees it. You are loved. You are adored. Joyce, won't you come and officially close us in prayer? So remember, we have everything that we need. Number two, let's continue to be who God has created us to be. And number three, may we never forget the sacrifice. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for that encouraging and giving us the strength to go on as we serve the Lord. May I ask everybody to please stand up as we close our service for today. Our most gracious, loving God, thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for you are everything that we need. Thank you, Lord, for the power of your love and you gave us your Holy Spirit to be the children that you wanted us to be for giving us the power of faith to become who we are that you wanted us to be Lord I pray that as we go out from this church may your name be glorified and you use us in everything that we do Thank you, Lord, for the love that you are giving us. Thank you, Lord, for the salvation. Thank you, Lord, for using each one of us to be a blessing. Lord, continue to bless us so that we can continue to be a blessing. May your name be glorified in our life and as we part from this church, O oh Lord, continue to lead our life and be a blessing and have a good life to show to others that you are our God who saves us from wrath. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Let's all stand and greet one another, say hello to someone, and then as Romy gets on the mic, we're gonna start our business meeting. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Mr. Uh, technical guy. <laughs> we have our slides there. We have a quick meeting. <laughs> Thank you.